Hi, I'm Maine and this is Time Lapse Laboratory. I'm a big fan of summer melons and the biggest ones that we get here in the United States regularly are the watermelon. They're a great summer treat. They have a nice hard exterior and a nice red flesh inside that's very sweet. They're about 92% water and if you're anything like me, sometimes you forget they're in the back of your fridge. I had this watermelon in the back of my fridge and it started to go bad. I thought it would be really interesting to see how something with such a high water content decayed. I thought it would make for a really interesting time lapse. The air conditioner noise goes away in a minute. The bucket is my attempt to keep this whole thing contained during filming and to keep my dog out of it. So a bit of an issue. Uh, it is forecasted to storm uh, in the very near future. And this watermelon is outside. So I'm trying to figure out what I can do so I can keep getting the shot without having to put this nasty wadding watermelon into my house. I think we're gonna tarp it. So move the table over top, put the light in so that it's not gonna be completely dark. One thing I didn't realize is that there is uh, a bunch of nasty liquid accumulating at the bottom of this bucket. Uh, so that's gonna get gross. And now we hope uh, all the equipment doesn't get ruined. I was really curious what the watermelon looked like after a big rainstorm. I think most of the water was kept out by the tarp, but some still to get in. The watermelon certainly has a smell to it at this point that is not so great. What we're seeing here and in the previous shot is just the top of the watermelon liquefying. After 16 days and the big reveal, very much a let's do this moment every time I had to stick my head under this tarp to check on the project. Just the amount of flies sitting on the rim was a bit unnerving, as if I hit the bucket at all, they all immediately flew into my face. You can see on day one here that the watermelon gets this white fungus over the top of it. It also starts to off-gas pretty aggressively. Here's where I changed the tarp and switched to the video light so that I could have somewhat consistent lighting in the evenings. Starting day two, you can see it gets very wet on top and the off-gassing from the decomposition actually slows down. There's a lot more fly larvae that begin to hatch at this point. The white film could be comms yeast or another fungus. I think the fly larvae hatching at this point is just Drosophila or common fruit flies. Later, as more decomposition occurs, the species changes to much larger flies. The slugs make a return here, and if you want to see some up-close shots of slugs eating in time-lapse, you can see that through the in-video link at the top of your screen. By day 5, the maggots have really eaten all of the exposed watermelon, and the rind of the melon is actually keeping everything contained in a bowl and preventing it from spilling out. Here you can see the maggots have gotten much bigger as different species of flies lay their eggs. The watermelon at this point is so toxic that numerous slugs that come in and feed on the watermelon immediately die in the shell. The white part you're seeing at the outside of the rind is actually the pith, and it's at this point that the maggots start eating the pith. They don't eat the rind, which I found really interesting because it still contains most of the liquid in the top of the watermelon shell. I actually wonder if this rind staying intact for as long as it did accelerated the decomposition of the watermelon because so much of it was contained in the outer rind. You can see a lot of the maggots are looking for higher ground outside of the water to pupate because they can't actually pupate and turn into flies while submerged. You're starting to see them really accumulate at the edges of the bucket, above the water line, and on the rind itself as it collapses into the water. At this point, the majority of the watermelon that is still somewhat solid is contained under the liquid of the decayed watermelon. Because I knew there were still solid pieces of the watermelon under the liquid, I decided to let this go for a few days more, so I could really make sure I captured the full decomposition of all the solids. One thing that I found really interesting at this stage of the time lapse was that any above the surface pieces of the watermelon rind were absolutely covered in maggots. You can see the center of the watermelon keep collapsing in on itself as decomposition continues. I thought this was a really interesting time lapse to show off the process of decomposition and highlight the different roles of bacteria, fungus, and insects that are all part of this essential process. So it's been 18 days uh, since we put the watermelon in and it's gone now. I know this is going to smell absolutely terrible. Let's, uh, let's see what we got. Right now, because I haven't moved it, it doesn't smell as bad as I thought it would, but I'm guessing I'm in for it uh, here in a minute. Ooh. Okay, now that I got close to it and got over it, it's it's really
this. It is uh, absolutely horrendous. I can't even describe how bad the smell is, but it is uh, unreal how bad it smells. Oh my God, it's terrible. That's all that's left of the watermelon after 18 days. Oh, that is unreal. So one final shot of this, really accelerated to show off all the changes happening at the same time. Really getting a chance to see the watermelon collapse on itself and liquefy. And then here played back in reverse so you can see all of that and really appreciate the full change that occurred over 17 days. Definitely one of the grosser time lapses I've done so far. If you like this video and want to see more, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. It is the best way that you can support me on Time Lapse Laboratory for new cool projects like this. Hit the notification bell so you can see them as soon as I post them. If you like the video, you can support me on Patreon at Time Lapse Laboratory or follow me on social media at Time Lapse Laboratory on Instagram and on TikTok. On Patreon, you can see behind the scenes footage and updates of projects that I'm currently working on. And you can also suggest things that you want to see me work on in the future. It's a great way to help support the channel and projects like this. And because these take so long, I really appreciate it. Patreon helps me pay for things like lighting and camera equipment for these time lapse projects. And as always, thank you.